Here are some samples of the unlimited possibilities of characters that we can portray in first-person narrative preaching. These samples are from Dick Stenbachen, Randy Roberts, and yours truly. To him who loves and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and, and ever. Said, I don't condemn you either. Go. Change your lifestyle. Find love in other places. Find love in me. But you are free. Can you believe that? I couldn't believe it. I could not believe I was hearing that here in the temple courts. My whole life is taken up with trying to somehow feel a sense that things are okay between God and me. And I do mean my life. Morning, afternoon, and night, I am constantly concerned about every little detail, all of the purity codes, all of the rituals, all the ceremonies, all the sacrifice. Everything has to be perfect for God to be okay. Sometimes I lie awake at night thinking, now, did I do that? Did I do that? Did I? Oh, no, I forgot. Oh, and the stabbings, the accusings of a condemning conscience. You're not good enough. You never get it right. You remember what you did last week and last month and last year and last decade? It's always condemning me. So I just work harder. I'll make him like me. And then, right here in the temple courts, where I spend my life trying to feel okay with God, this Nazarene rabbi walks in and looks at somebody who really is guilty, who really ought to be feeling guilty and condemned, and just says, I don't condemn you. Go. Live in freedom. And then Jesus said, well, if they're hungry, you feed them. And, and uh, why, my heart, I, I feed 5,000 people? Why, the, we don't have that kind of money. And that's when Andrew came up and he said, well, this little boy has a lunch, uh, but uh, maybe <laughs> a little kid's lunch feeding 5,000? Oh, sure, that makes a lot of sense, Andrew. Thank you for your contribution. It's just love that puts me right. Well, listen to this. What shall we say in response to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God loved us so much that he didn't spare his own son, but let him suffer Have for you walked us. on water? Uh, no, not unless it's frozen. That doesn't count. And I got to walking, and then I had another thought. And you know what my thought was? While I'm walking on water, I'd love to see the look on the faces of the other disciples. I would love to see their face. Now, the waves were still pretty high. But it was kind of neat. You know, you kind of ride them up and slide down the other side. And I had this idea to turn around and look kind of like what would be going through their mind. And you know what? When I did that, I took my eyes off of Jesus. Now, the minute I did that, I knew I'd made a, yep, big mistake. Anytime you take your eyes off of Jesus, my friends, you're making a mistake. So what was your position in the, in the trial or the mock trial as they call it? Excuse me, mock trial? It was a real trial. There were multiple trials because he was guilty. He, why, don't you understand? If, if we would let him run roughshod over all of our, our laws and our people and, and upset the Romans, he could ruin everything. We could lose the nation. We could lose everything. It was up to me to stop that. 
and he had to be brought to trial, and I was the one who helped it happen. So this Jesus, huh, he set out to change people. Well, we changed him. That's what happened. I went into him and I said, tell me. They say, you're a king. Are you a king? Jesus stood there, looked me straight in the eye, and asked me a question. And he said, have you come to this conclusion on your own? Or did someone tell you? <laughs> what? I'm not a Jew. How would I know these things? Then he said, to this I was born. I tell you the truth. Truth, I said. Truth. What is truth? I mean, I've been dealing with these, these, these holy men who are no more holy than I. What is truth? They say they have truth. What is truth? And he said, it is finished. Finished? Oh, crucifixion. A strong man as he was could last three, maybe four days before you would die of exposure, not of loss of blood, although there was plenty of that. You see, every time he breathed, every time he had to move up and pull against the nails, he rubbed his back, which was raw, against that wood. But you die of thirst, you die of exposure, dehydration. It's not finished. But I couldn't take my eyes off this man. And then he pulled up again. But this time he cried with a loud voice, not the voice of someone who was whimpering out, but a loud voice. And he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then his head dropped in death. And when it did, there was a bolt of lightning that cut across the sky, and the earth began to shake. And there was a clap of thunder. And in the silence following that thunder, I heard my own voice cry out, this was God's Son! Here at the Adventist Communication Network, we're really excited about a brand new project that's now in production entitled Faces. Here's a sneak peek. It's our sincere prayer here at ACN that your preaching will be Holy Spirit inspired and that your congregations will grow spiritually and numerically healthy. As you prayerfully consider first person narrative preaching, open your heart and accept all the blessings heaven has just for you, my friend.